Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Think, Learn, Do. For this episode, I wanted to make a toilet paper monitoring system. Since running out of toilet paper is quite the uh, horrible situation. So for my original idea, I planned on using some of these load sensors to weigh the actual package of toilet paper and then just have my good old Node MCU let me know when I ran out just by, by weighing it and knowing if it was too little. But unfortunately I spent several hours on those load sensors and could not get them to work. So the next idea I came up with was to simply have a button that the toilet paper would rest on and when the toilet paper was there, the microcontroller would check the, the button state and see that it was pressed and no we still had toilet paper. You lift it off, switch gets open, it checks it, sees it's open, and sends me an email letting me know that I'm out of toilet paper. Also unfortunately for me, the switches I have take a lot of pressure to actually trigger or to actuate. And this toilet paper, even with like a little platform on, on here, is not enough weight to, to actuate that switch. So that didn't work. The new plan I've got is to actually take and make my own switch. So take two pieces of uh, paperboard and then have a a layer of copper foil, copper foil tape here and here, and then make some simple springs on each side. I've just bent plastic that'll provide the the force to reopen the switch when there's no pressure on it. And just have some wires coming off, going back to the my controller. I can check the state whether it's open or, or closed. Uh, this one probably goes to ground, but whatever. So that's the new plan. And I have made switches similar to this before, and they work pretty well for very little pressure, so I think this will work. So that'll be my simple switch. The toilet paper, of course, will sit on top of that, right? Then we take the last one off. These plastic springs push it open. My controller reads it, which of course is going to be my Node MCU. And it's just going to send a wireless signal out to my server over here, which once again is going to be running Node.js, gets the signal, sends me an email, lets me know about my dire problem of not having toilet paper. All right, let's build it. tops, top and bottom. And you're gonna, this is going to be my paper or my plastic spring. You kind of see how springy that is. And that should make a nice connection there. Make sure those line up. Almost looks like that edge is still contacting even when it's open. I might have a problem with that.
It almost looks like that'll work. Let's do a quick sanity check. Trust the multimeter. So assuming this works, we should have infinite resistance when this is not pressed and it should go to zero or low resistance when it is pressed. And that is looking very good. No. Okay. Okay. So probably what's happening is these wires were hitting on the wires. The toilet paper is not enough to actually. Okay. So we'll have to use a piece here to make it so it can actually make that connection. Not a big deal. That'll work. But, but what I think is happening is. Is just somehow keeping the, the toilet paper from making the full contact. But we can definitely work with that. Next step is to get this hooked up to the Node MCU. And we'll build our toilet paper holder using this beautiful thing. And a piece of wood. It'll look very rustic. Okay, so here's my amazing toilet paper holder. I spared you guys the <laughs> excitement of watching me try and build this out of wood. <clears throat> and then our toilet paper roll comes over and sits like this. Let's try and do another quick sanity check. Once again, we're going to check the resistance. Okay, so it is still showing that we have infinite resistance. So let's get put our spacer on there. I think we're going to have to redesign my uh, switch. Let's try this a different way. So I'm thinking what the problem is, is we're still getting too much interference from those wires. Let's try changing this up a little. So instead of having wires on either side, let's go with a wire and a wire. And we'll have our copper foil coming out like this. And then the outside's like that. Let's try that real fast. Infinite resistance while open, so that's a good sign. And then all closed. Means there's little to no resistance. So so far so good. Let's move back to our other full setup. That looks pretty good.
Hold this giant on my controller. All right, I have my Node MCU here. Oh, it's got my software running on it. It's checking this GPIO pin here, which is set to input pull up. And that's connected over here to our switch, and then back through our switch back down to ground. All it's going to do is monitor this this uh, pin if there's a change. It's going to send a make it, or make a GET request to my Node.js server over here. And my Node.js server is going to send out an email to my fake email address here and let me know that I'm out of toilet paper. All right, let's see it in action. Excellent. So in conclusion, that was an interesting project. I would have really liked to have gotten the load sensors working, so that's definitely something I'll have to work on again. Uh, my switch turned out to be not that great. Uh, it basically has to be in the exact same or the exact spot for it to detect that there's something on it. So that's something that needs to be improved. I'm guessing uh, next time I try this, I'll just go to or I'll get a. Uh, a better, like an actual switch that somebody else has made that actually works. Um, I'm guessing there's probably switches out there that have a much lighter uh, pressure on that will allow them to actuate. And then also, uh, I'll need to change up the Node MCU so that it can run off a battery. So we'll probably use some deep sleep or something to make it so it doesn't just sit there and drain the battery really fast. But hey, it worked, and that was pretty fun. So thanks for watching.